Hi there, it's Ryan G. Wright with DoHardMoney.com coming to you with a Just Ask Ryan question of the day. And today we're gonna to be talking about the process of purchasing a home that's been foreclosure. Hey, Brandon. Hey, so Ryan. we're gonna talk about this and how to buy homes that are going through the foreclosure process. Um, so if you have a question of the day, every single day, I answer a question of the day just like this one. And all you've got to do, if you'd like me to answer your question on real estate, investing, um, on personal finance, type it in the comments below and I'd be more than happy to answer your question of the day for you and for anybody else that's interested in that. So let's talk about foreclosure. So there's two steps, two steps to the foreclosure process. You've got the foreclosure and you've got the what's called pre-foreclosure. So foreclosure is basically the process of the lender taking back the asset that they used in order to give the loan. So basically what this means is there's unsecured loans and there's secured loans. A securitized loan is where the loan is made against something, a tangible asset. So for example, like a car. If somebody gave a loan on a car and you didn't pay on that car, they would come and take the car, repossess the car from you. That's the exact same thing that's happening with real estate. The foreclosure is the process of repossessing the house for somebody that hasn't been making the payments. So the first step in the foreclosure process is somebody making the payments stops making the payments. They get a late payment. And depending upon the bank and depending upon the agreements that were signed, after a period of time of not making the payments, and let's say it's two, three, four, five, six, whatever the case is, then the lender is gonna file what's called a notice of default. You see, a notice of default happens when the uh, owner stops making those payments, and basically that is public record. And what this means is down at the county recorders, it's typically done digitally, the bank says, we wanna put everybody in the world on notice that this property and this borrower has not been paying us. And the reason that they do that is if that borrower owes other people money, they can try and attach that to the house because it's saying, hey, this guy owes us money and we are thinking about taking back this house. So that's the first thing that happens. Now, a homeowner may catch up on those payments. They may make a payment plan. Um, they may work with a bank. They may put some of the money on arrears and, and do a makeup plan. Any of those things could happen. But if they don't, the next thing that happens is a notice of sale or a Liz Pendants. And basically what that says is, hey, we're gonna sell this property on this date and at this time. So you have the notice of default and then you have the notice of sale is what happens. And it can be a little bit different vernacular depending upon what state you're in, but the process is basically the same. So then what happens is the sale, it's saying we're gonna sell this property. So the, the house goes up for sale and it's an auction and it's a public auction um, where everybody can come and bid on this property. What happens is the bank is able to make a bid as well. So if the bank has owed $100,000, they get to add on their fees, attorney's costs and everything else. So maybe they're now owed $115,000. Well, the bank can start the bid at whatever they want. Let's say they start the bid at $75,000. What happens is everyone else can bid and the bank can continue to bid as well. The highest bidder then is the one that's gonna have the right to own that property. Now, if the highest bidder is the bank, then the bank actually now owns the property, the mortgage is set aside, they own the property, and then they can sell the property or fix the property up or rent the property, or whatever they wanna do, because they are now, the process of the foreclosure is them getting back the property. Now, if someone else becomes the highest bidder, they typically have a day to have cash to pay in full, which then goes to the foreclosure attorney, which then pays the bank in full and they walk away. Now, a bank can actually sell for less than what's owed to them. They may do a cost analysis and say, you know what? I don't think we're gonna get what's owed to us, so we're gonna go ahead and go less than what's owed to us and just walk away from this deal. So that's what's happening. So if you wanna buy a house that's a foreclosure, the easiest way to buy a house that's a foreclosure is to buy what's called an REO, real estate owned. This is when the bank has taken the property back and they take that as inventory and that's called real estate owned. REO is real estate owned and they're trying to liquidate that property. That's the easiest way. It's also one of the most competitive ways because 
they typically list that with a real estate agent and that property goes on the market and everybody, Tom, every Tom, Dick and Harry out there sees that and is fighting over the price. But it is a way and I've bought several um, REO properties from the bank that were listed on the MLS and over time have had great success with those. But if you want to get a better deal, if you don't want to turn it into a rental property or wait for appreciation, the next thing you can do is actually work notice of default and notice of sales. So the notice of default is actually public information. So what you can do is you can pull up that public information. And by the way, if you have Investor's Edge software, it makes it really easy to do this. Uh, you can probably hear these dogs barking in the background. <laughs> so with Investor's Edge, you can post some notice of defaults. Um, you can go knock on their doors. You can send them postcards. You can do skip traces. You can, you can do a variety of things. Um, you can text message. You can... Um, do a voice broadcast, you can call them directly, you can knock on their door, you can send them a postcard, any of those things you can do at a fairly low cost. The nice thing about it is you know they've got a problem. You wanna cross-reference that against somebody that has equity. If they don't have equity, that's gonna be a problem. So you wanna make sure they have some equity or you've gotta go into working a short sell, which is a whole different topic, one that hasn't been very popular in a few years because we've dealt with such high appreciation. So you can go after those people. As long as they have equity, notice of default, you can go after those. A lot of those people bury their head in the sand and just think, hey, you know what? I'm gonna work this out, um, so I'm not gonna need any help. So the other thing you can do is go after notice of sales. The downside to going after notice of sales is they typically have a sell date in a few weeks. Um, they typically put a sell date out for four to six weeks. And so you've gotta get in touch with those people. One of the best things you can do with those people is knock on the door and you can just say, hey, as a matter of public record, I understand you're having some trouble with ABC Bank. I work with these things and wondering if I can help you out. And that's typically a great door approach rather than saying, hey, you're in foreclosure. You don't really wanna say that. You wanna say, hey, um, as a matter of public record, I understand Chase Bank is giving you some trouble. I specialize in helping people. I wonder if I can help you out on this. And then you can talk about the situation. Now, most people in that situation are just gonna deny it. They're gonna say, oh no, we're fine. We got all taken care of. And your response is gonna be, oh, no problem. Do you mind if I get your phone number? Because I'd like to double check the court records and just let you know, because if it's all taken care of, we're good. More than likely they're saying that just to get you off their porch, but they're actually gonna need your help. Um, so that's a way that you can go after the pre-foreclosure process. We already talked about just buying directly from the bank. So there's some different ways that you can buy a home that's going through the foreclosure process. If you have liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up button. It means a lot to me. If you have a question you'd like me to answer, type it in the comments below. A couple other videos I know you're gonna like. One is how to flip foreclosed houses. I've got a whole um, video on this over here. And then also I've got another one, why foreclosed homes um, are so cheap and how you can pick those up. Um, check out that video as well. If you ever need any help, check us out over at dohardmoney.com. We've got tips, tricks, videos, training, software, help finding properties, you name it, and funding. Um, but we'd love to help you out. So give us a holler. We might be a good fit for each other. Check us out at dohardmoney.com. Um, otherwise, make it a very profitable day and bye for now.